Hello. Welcome to the second part of this series of logic lectures. So I'm taking over this teaching from um, Charles Morgan, as you've probably no doubt heard. What I thought I would do is, in response also to some requests, is to do a little bit of recapitulation of things that he introduced, partly to kind of uh, fix that notation, and point up any perhaps minor differences I might have from his approach. But I thought I'd also give a kind of overview of the way I, where I see the course going, what the course is about. And at a midpoint like this, this perhaps is a uh, useful point anyway to do. So let's see, uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about formalizing languages. So in some sense, we have perhaps over here, kind of fuzzily defined, these are kind of real languages. So languages of everyday discourse, how we speak. And what you've seen is how we in the, formalize a language and what in a way that logicians would call a first order formalization, a first order language. So such a language can have variables and it can have constants in. So constants are like nouns and then we substitute in something for variables to also give us nouns to refer to, well, objects and structures. And typically the structures are either something in mathematics, something in computer science, something in linguistics. So we then have formalized languages. So formal languages. Over here. So our real languages, of course, inform how we think these formal languages are going to be. So again, here, this is something that, you know, computers, computers, linguistics, mathematics, they all deal here with formal languages. So then when we, we point to the, well, the formalized language is that it becomes a mathematical object itself. So it's susceptible to all the things that one can, all the tools that you can bring to bear from mathematics. And so what happened in the early 20th century <clears throat> was that people started to think about, you know, what precisely were the differences between, you know, truth in a structure or meaning what we might call semantics, and about formal languages where we talk about proofs or deductions from axioms. Now it's quite remarkable, but I mean, in the 1910s and 20s, logicians, although they were building on the work of uh, Russell and Frege, there was still a certain amount of haziness as to about what, you know, what, what was truth, what was provability, and people got confused and used these words interchangeably. So it was one of the um, attributes of Gödel in his completeness theorem was to make completely clear what the relation between proof and truth, proof and truth was. So, so then came some kind of reasoning about deductive systems. or if you like, axiom systems, axiomatics. So reasoning about deductive systems and axiomatics. So this will be the first thing. And secondly, about structure. So this kind of is a divide that kind of runs through the course is we're trying to look at things like syntax, proof, language. And at the same time, we want to talk about structures, semantics, meaning what it means for something to be true in a structure. So this divide here is bridged by the Gödel completeness theorem.
which we will be doing. Here. <laughs> and so here we're, we're kind of talking about or using or applying maths here to these notions of formal languages and, and structure <clears throat> here. Now, when we apply this kind of reasoning about these deductive systems to maths, something remarkable occurred. Uh, Hilbert in the 20s was searching for what would be an axiom system that he thought would deliver all the truths of mathematics. And it was thought that we just have to look hard enough and then we can find some kind of axiom system so that in theory at least from those axioms we could get all of the, for example, truths of number theory. Right? Or all the truths in some other branch of mathematics, but first of all, number theory, say. And these hopes were dashed by Gödel. They had a stunning theorem in 1930, the so-called incompleteness theorem, that said that this was entirely impossible. Right? There was no one axiom system which was given to you in some kind of effective or algorithmic way, which could give us all the truths, even just of arithmetic. So the Gödel incompleteness theorem. Sorry, not enough space to write it here. So the incompleteness here. Okay, so the mathematics that we use on our deductive systems here, we get results which feed back into here, right? So stir well mathematics, and you get some results about formal languages using mathematics. But then the Gödel results of this incompleteness theorem tell us the limits of that kind of process that we've got. So this, if we have time, will be towards the end of the course. We'll discuss the incompleteness theorems. But for the moment, we are, and I shall be doing some recapitulation talking about deductive systems and axiomatics here before we move on to the completeness theorem, which is our main next task here.